Okay, looks like I am live and online. Yay, all right. So, once again, uh, we are still dealing with the coronavirus. We are still dealing with Trump as president, and we're still dealing with uh, the process of the soul. And so, there is a lot of processes right now that uh, the governing um, process of pressure on humanity is part of the, uh, the amount of energy and personality that affects the soul. Yeah. So uh, uh, you can grow up as a man, you can grow up as a black man, you can grow up as a Mexican man, you can grow up as a Chinese man. Each and every one of those people are going to have a different experience because of their race. And yet they're just a person. Yeah. And <clears throat> that's a governing body. That's, that's what a governing body is. Outside of yourself, there is so much bias and prejudice of difference and wanting to control that difference and just make money out of it. Not, not care about the person, not care about the situation, but just making money. You know, so you have your dictators, you have your governing body, you have uh, whatever, even your business, the people you work for. <coughs> if you're a different race, uh, you have a very big chance of being treated differently yeah, because of the biases that are based on your country, the race from your country or the race from your culture. If you've been in this country for a long time and people know nothing of your country, <coughs> then they only know of the culture that's in this country that they know of, and they bias with that. So we have this thing right now. We have this thing where we're, uh, y your personality is being uh, focused upon. Yeah, you're you're being labeled. Yeah, and uh, if you're uh, if you're poor, you fit into that. Yeah, if you're um, Poor, you fit into the class of being black or being brown or uh, a race that, uh, in our biased mind, uh, <coughs> expresses uh, the nation going down. And, and that down process is money. It's a process of money. Yeah. So imagine you've got, <coughs> you, you've got a government that uh, doesn't want anything to do with a virus because it's going to cost a lot of money. Yeah, so uh, all they can say is that it's going to go away. Yeah, just like my picture. I have it taken off. There, I'm back. I think yes, I'm back. Okay, good. So the process is that um, God is a machine in this orientation. Yeah, it's God the machine. So don't mess with the machine. You're a cog in that machine. Don't mess with it. Yeah, because uh, your wages will go away. Your insurance doesn't exist. All these things that are up a ladder. If you make more money and you get into a job that can give you benefits, and those benefits include a possible retirement program. Yeah, uh, possible. Uh, what happens if you get unhealthy? Yeah, then you have insurance. You know, what happens if you can't see anymore? Then you get eye insurance. Yeah, what if you, your, your teeth are falling out? Well, if you got a really good company, they'll take care of your dental too. Yeah, and that's because you're with a really good company. Yeah, and you pay for that. Yeah, it, it, it's not easy to get into a company like that. It's, it's uh, a lot of times that's seen as the uh, wages that you're earning is the benefits, not so much the money, but the benefits. Because it really does cost a lot for the company to, to uh, bring these things into action. And then the government says, oh, well, yeah, you, you got to have unemployment insurance too, so let's strap that on to your paycheck and let's take that out. And then if you were ever unemployed, then you could use that insurance. And we'll store it up for you, you know. And trust us, we'll do this. Yeah. And then... Uh, on the other side, they take your taxes, you know, and, and how many people are in your house, how many people do you uh, support, you know, they'll take that much tax out, you know, and, you know, so uh, you really don't end up with much, you know, you, you don't end up with hardly anything, 
Yeah, because you have to have a car to get to work. You know, so that means you've got to pay for the car. You have to have gas. You have to have insurance for that car. You need to live in a house so you could take a shower and you could feel adequate. You know, so and you have to live fairly close to your work. You know, so these are things that are incredibly costly, and you got to go up a certain level in the economy. You know, and and you get paid well enough. You know, if you get the right job. You know, and if you get benefits, but look at the majority of people, they they're not getting benefits. They're working part time. Their job is set up so that they don't get benefits. You don't work enough to get benefits. You're you're a contractor. You don't get benefits. You know, even though you're working for them full time, you still don't get benefits because you're a subcontractor and you're willing to do that just to get the job. Yeah, you know, just to take that job. So a lot of people are left out of this area of benefits, you know, and nothing is subsidized by our government, you know, not a thing. You, know, uh, you get unemployment insurance, but you know, look at unemployment insurance right now. Our president is cutting back your unemployment insurance. You, you know, he's labeling everybody okay. We value you at six hundred dollars. You know, six hundred dollars will pay you. You know, I don't know if that's a month or a week. You know, I haven't looked into it. I'm hoping to God it's a week. You know, but it's likely it's a month. You know, you know. But check it out. Yeah, it, none of it is good. None of it is 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 uh, sustainable. And so we're in a a really big uh, pressure against our soul. Yeah, our soul. Uh, when we have all these things going on we get a bigger and bigger personality problem. Yeah, our personal life is stressful. Our circumstances aren't paying off. You know, our position in life is not working out. And now everybody is in a position to where a lot of people are in a position, literally millions and millions and millions and millions of people are in position in every single state in the United States of being kicked out of, and not being able to pay their lease. And then if they don't do that, they're, they're behaving very badly, and they're not going to leave, and they're going to force the person who is allowing them to live in that house to lose their mortgage on the house. And then they're going to lose the house, because after a while they can't pay for that house, because they've got nobody there to pay for the rent. And it, it's a business partnership. When you rent a house, you're in a business partnership with the person who's leasing out the house, who is not making a million dollars a year. Uh, people who rent houses are on basic low income. They're they're just making it, and it's hard. You got to fix those houses. You've got to do the plumbing. You got to do uh, maintenance. You got to do all these things. And it's a lot of times it's not what they expect to do. You know, it, it's a retirement plan because there are no real realities to this retirement world that we all think that we're part of. You know, one day we get to retire. <coughs> So the reality is that, that most people never save money. Most people never uh, live sustainably you know, and small. You know, so in case if something did happen, uh, they wouldn't be kicked out of their house. They could live in their house because it has solar, because they have an electric car, because they know how to eat light, you know, and they know how to live well. You know, and they have good friends that keep them in a positive state. You know, so that when stress comes along, they're less stressful and they're able to handle it. You know, but most people aren't. Ninety-nine percent of the people out there are highly stressed and highly uh, unable to handle the next stress that comes along. Yeah. So all that is what's up against the soul. Yeah. And so the soul has a relationship to Christ. Yeah, and it's the direct embodiment is, of the soul is Jesus Christ. Yeah, and so the when under these situations in life, and and uh, you know we're not in an ungodly world. You know we're in a simultaneous world of both God and hell. Yeah, and uh, it's not about you had bad karma. It's not about you know uh, what is your value. You know all this kind of stuff that's put on us in this illusion. You know, it's really about the fact that you have a soul, and that if that soul is ignited, it has a fire within it, 
and it burns up the stress. Uh, it clears and heals uh, the mental body, the emotional body, the physical body. It brings the personality into a better place. Yeah. And the personality begins to transcend the situation at hand. And it begins to control the situation at hand. That's the power of the soul. And uh, the weakening of the soul is that these people out there who think that they're dominant can, can weaken you to such a degree to where you believe that they have the power. And they're the ones in charge. And you've got to follow along, you know, in that process. And, uh, you know, it, it could make you pretty upset. You know, because you haven't got a soul clear enough to have a clear mind, to have a clear understanding of the given situation at hand. And then you could check into the given situation at hand and you'll get answers. You know, like coronavirus, okay? Wear a mask. Don't go outside. You know, stay away from all the people in your family. You know, just stay away. You know, lock yourself up in a bedroom or a garage or wherever you need to be for that length of period of time. Get yourself tested. Find out that you do not have the virus and then hang out. As long as you don't have the virus, you can hang out. But first, you have to isolate, get tested, realize you don't have the virus, and then you can hang out. Yeah? But don't go outside. Don't go meet friends. Don't go to a bar. Don't go wash your clothes in a laundromat. Don't do anything like that. Work it out. Do it at home. Yeah? Don't go outside. Isolate yourself because I it's the same thing with your family. You know, you got to do the exact same situation with anybody else you're going to come in contact with in order to stop this because this is a deadly virus. The president is telling people that children, 100%, if not maybe 99%, but he says he believes it's 100% that children do not get the virus. And uh, if they do get the virus, they get no symptoms whatsoever. None. 100%. No symptoms. Yeah. But is that true? Uh, you know, and uh, what is the truth is that you take the last month, 380,000 children were tested and found positive for the virus. And you take that and you now you look at that and you take that as a percentage. Yeah, that's, that is the totality that we know of that has the virus that we've tested. It's 380. Yeah, and out of that, 25 little children died. 25, not zero, not one. Not one got sick and then got better. No, these are the 25 that died. And then there were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds who got sick that didn't die. But they suffered, yeah? They suffered mentally, hallucinations, they thought they were going to die. They went through hell and back. These are little children. Yeah. Yeah. And it's only going to be an, a year or so till these kids start coming on YouTube or start getting checked out at a school because now they've gone mental. Yeah. Now they can't study. Now they can't think clearly. Now they're having strokes. Now they're having heart attacks. Now they're having problems with their kidneys. Now they have diabetes. You know, one year after another year after another year. Because we have a president saying you need to send these kids to school. Yeah. And that's really important you understand that in the soul, we do no harm. No harm. Zero harm. Yeah. We don't think negative of other people. We see it. We, under, we get to clarify it through discernment and discrimination. And through that, we have clear-minded discrimination. Yeah? And that discrimination isn't hate. It's a higher level of understanding, yeah? which on a collective level, masses of people can receive the same understanding without it being, we've got to go one way or another. It's just the truth. Yeah? It's part of discernment. Yeah? But we aren't going to get that truth because we have to go through the science and we have to go through these other things. And there's other things you're going to find out when it comes down to the children. Yeah? We have a vaccine that's being focused on. We hope that it's going to be ready by January. But the, the way that it's being set up is that the vaccine will not go to children. It will not go to children. Because our president says 
children do not get infected. So we're not spending money on these kids. We're going to send it to the military, to the doctors, to the nurses, to the people who we know have the virus already. Yeah, millions of people. 350 million people in the United States need the virus. Every single one of them need the virus. Yeah. But it's situated as triage. If you're closer to dying, if you're already sick, if you're already positive, if you're old, yeah, then you should get the vaccine. But because this guy is lying and deceiving people, and we won't know the results for another 8 to 10 to 12 or a year of the children, because this isn't going to go away and the vaccine isn't going to come in January, and once it does, it's not going to go to the children. Yeah, read it. Yeah, look it up, because this is already, you know, set by the government. This is how they set, how they're going to do it, you know. And it's not good. It's not good. Yeah. So that process of harm, you know, bringing harm, it brings it into the family. It brings it into the moms and the dads or the caretakers of these children. You know, because it's up to us to make that decision whether or not we strap them in in the car, you know, whether or not we leave them outside, you know, at a restaurant and we go inside, you know, whether or not we make bad decisions or we make good decisions. You know, are we good parents or are we bad parents? Yeah, yeah, it's really a truth, you know, and in order to get through this and come out of this with a soul, you know? Because if you do the wrong things, you'll get harm from it. Harm will come to you. Diseases out of freaking nowhere will pop up because you didn't do the right thing for your children. Karma exists, people. It exists. I have no control over it. You have no control over it. But the law is we cannot do harm. We must learn to discern, discriminate, and make our own personal decisions and not be led by outside forces. Yeah? It's so forceful that the President of the United States, we have a state, Florida, which right now is really top of the line going up and down, up and down of people dying, people getting sick, people going out partying, and then all of a sudden the whole country in that side of the place is just filled with tens of thousands of people getting positive, you know, in their virus tests. You know, so he's all upset. He can't get his big ceremonies down there in Florida where he lives, and he's got his great big mansion, and he wants people to come and all this kind of stuff. And he's all upset because Florida, Florida won't lower their amount of people that they're getting positives from and the amount of deaths and the amount of people that are filled up in all those hospitals. Yeah? He's upset simply because he's not allowed to go to Florida and have his big deal. Yeah? So what does he do? He contacts Florida. And he tells them, if you don't get your kids back to school on time, I'm going to take $200 million out of your school budget. $200 million. Teachers buy their own paper, bring their own pencils, because there's not money in the school. There's no money. There's never money. The budget is just on the edge of being ready when the kids show up, pay the janitor, pay the bus driver, pay the salaries of the principal and other people, you know, and keep the place clean, a little safe, keep the grounds clear, do football, have a coach. It costs money, a lot of money. Now when you put a virus on top of it, it costs two to three times that. Yeah? And the focus is you can't, it's not education, it's that you can't do harm. That's their focus. All the teachers are in their heart going, how can I do this? How can I have these kids here when I look at them? And I'm thinking, I'm putting them at jeopardy. I don't know if I'm doing harm to them, but I'm going to find out. 
This is horrifying. What a breakdown on the soul. Yeah? Because you have no choice in the matter. If you're in Florida, you're going to lose $200 million. You know, so you better show up to work. Yeah? Because it's everybody's job. Future jobs. Jobs for the next three or four years. $200 million. That, that ends your budget to think, you know, how are we going to open the school? I've been there. I've been there. I've been there. I'm 69 years old. I have been through being a father. I've been through school systems. I've been through watching schools get closed. I've watched fire departments get closed. I've watched cities go bankrupt and fire departments get closed and schools get closed and people and children being moved from further and further away to different districts. Yeah, because schools are being closed. Right now, in the town that we live in, our post office is being closed because of Trump. So it will slow down the possibility of being able to do the voting. How many thousands of other post offices are going through the same process? Yeah. It's all money. It's all money, and he knows it. And his thing is he doesn't want to put out money. So what does he do? He does things to save money. $200 million dollar savings he made. He ended our relationship with Germany, you know, by making them pay a debt He's and, 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 and keeping them from so much right relationship with us as a support system, as an ally, in case of war or anything else. At least they'd have an ally, you know, we would support them. But no, he stepped completely out and said, no, we take all financial aid away to Germany. You know, what? Are you kidding me? That's insane. It's insane. But it's all about money. You know, so we have a situation to where your soul is being sold. And you wake up every morning thinking you're okie dokie, but you're not. Every day, your soul is being sold. Because this person governing the most powerful country in the world is so evil, he's manifesting harm every day. Manifesting harm every day by collecting money <coughs> and telling people there is no ecological disaster looming. I hate, I hate, you know, uh, um, you know, LED light bulbs because they make my skin orange. You know, that's what he said, you know. I hate windmills, you know, because they give you cancer. Sounds like this guy's pretty, a little fraidy cat, you know? I won't eat people's food. I'll only eat McDonald's because chances are they won't poison me in McDonald's. They don't know who I am, you know? He sounds like a little scaredy cat, you know? We have a little scaredy cat running the most powerful country in the world. And we have decisions that have to be made every day. And he has a group of people around him. Well, what do they do? They're working hard not to give him information. They're keeping large masses of information from him. And they're answering those things on their own in back rooms. And they're running the government. He's not. He's just out front making shit, causing problems, writing bills that no one else cares about. So he does them on his own. Forces them into happening. And he says, sue me if you want to. That's what he does. Sue me, he says. Sue me. It's all about money. Yeah? Yeah. So here's a little thing. Just recently, our, our nice little Trump. This is back to school. Don't know why it's doing that. Let me see.
Oh. This morning, this morning, He's basically forcing one of the largest school districts, the Tampa area, to reopen classrooms by the end of the month for in-person learning or risk losing more than $200 million in funding. This morning. That's pretty intense. And then we have a relationship that Joe Biden is running for office. And uh, because of the awakening of the soul, yeah, this sermon, discrimination that's being forced on humanity, and people have to chill in order to get this right because so much lying is going on. Yeah. So the thing is, is that the side on Biden's side doesn't spend any time lying, boasting lies of any kind, you know, past, present, or any kind. Yeah. You know, so. That doesn't trigger the same scenario. So that's only happening in one area, only in Trump. So that it's creating a change in people's uh, attraction. Their soulful attraction is being led toward Biden quickly. Yeah. Including the over 65s. Um, and, and if the cap is eight points uh, nationally, it, it is highly, highly unlikely doesn't say it. It is like trying to thread a rope through the eye of the needle to imagine how Donald Trump wins the electoral college this time with numbers like that this is uh, this is a this is a big gap it should be pointed out this is a bigger and more consistent gap between biden and trump than we ever saw in uh, four years ago between clinton clinton and donald trump where the polls were much closer this is this is these numbers are different they simply are different and these are not the kinds of numbers where you you manage to to somehow eke out 270 electoral votes by plucking off wisconsin michigan and pennsylvania Trump yeah he hasn't got a chance <clears throat> but the only thing that changes it is the soul you know so the the uh telling everybody you're not going to be able to vote well that's fucking frustrating you know because here this is very important you know and he's crazier than a loon everybody says it every psychologist his cousin everybody says it so it really triggers the soulful need to make sure we're not harmed any further because all the news about china at war all the news about north korea all the news about russia is not on the news they're keeping it from everybody from knowing what really is going on out there that he's creating which is a horrible relationship between china and america russia and america defenses to germany thailand yeah south korea all of that is based on us hong kong their safety based on us yeah but we've got this guy in there that's making them extremely weak and they don't want anything to do with him. Yeah. You know, so it's causing more soulful distancing. Yeah. A process inside of people that they're not able to discern or discriminate because they're not getting the view. Yeah. They don't know that we're in the middle of a war. There's an actual war going on. You know, China's at war. We're at war with China. Yeah, yeah, you don't know this. Yeah, and that is still in our soulful quality. It's in an energy, it's there, it's real reality. Yeah, so it's affecting our soul. And whether or not we come out of this correctly, yeah, is whether or not we stay calm. Yeah. 
So there's a lot going on, and and putting the children at at uh, at the greatest of threat, you know, is is the worst of possible things. And the majority of people in the America in America are men and women, and they have children, you know. So there's masses of people in the 350 million people of the United States. This is masses of those people who are being forced to do something they shouldn't do, yeah. And they're not being helped in order to isolate, in order to make sure all these numbers go down. We've never gotten to that. We've had to open up, go back out, go in, go back out. None of that has ever been taken charge of. Yeah. So now we're act, we're supposed to act like that doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter at all. We need to just put the kids in school because that'll allow the parents to get back to work, and that'll make the president have economy. Because that's all he talks about when he gets on the news. The economy today has gone up by the Dow of so much, you know. And the stock is looking really great, really strong, really strong, yeah. It's all about money. Everything he talks about is about money, yeah. And in the end, he might mention, well, the coronavirus, you know, it's, it's getting better. It's really getting totally better. Every state is better, yeah. That's what he says. Yeah, but yet, if you go on the news, if you live in any state, your news, your personal news is telling you the truth. And the president pops up and says, and here you live in Florida, and says, you got to get back to school. You got to do all these things and da 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 and, and you can't, you know. And now you're forced. You have to send your kids to school. And we have 50 states this is going on in, and hundreds of them. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of counties in every state. And each county has a school district. Yeah. You got to really reconsider, you know, we are a soul. We, as a collective, the Constitution of the United States helps us understand the preamble and the balance of the soul. And that we govern this thing. Yeah. If we make choices, do not send your kids back to school. Wait to see what happens on those who had to go back to school. Wait at least two to three. It won't hurt anybody. You're halfway through. You're in the first semester. It's already started. Yeah? Yeah? By September, you know, October, November, December, you get another break. Yeah? Wait till that break. And watch the news and see what's going on and listen to your school. Be aware of what's going on in school. How many times did it close down? How many kids are in the hospital? Yeah? Don't listen to the president. Listen local. Make your own decision locally. And if your school has nothing, absolutely nothing for those three months, send your kids to school. Yeah? You can't do it any other way. Yeah? You, you really can't. We shouldn't be sending your kids to school in the first place. Yeah. But since you've got to do that, and it's going to happen, utilize your discernment and discrimination and make the right choice for yourself because you're the more soulful person in your community. And you're going to take care of your kids. And you're not going to be out there with a horn saying, you're all so stupid, sending your kids to school, da, da, da. Just stay home. Do it on your own. Do it quietly. Keep your kids happy. Feed them well. Play games. Help them get through school online. You know, do all those things. Yeah, and get past these next few months. Because it's going to be horrendous. In November, we will have a new president. In January... A new president will be in office. And this is what's going to happen when our new president gets in office. This is who you're going to meet. I know how to get it done. In 2009, President Obama and I inherited an economy in free fall, and we prevented another Great Depression. We enacted the largest infrastructure plan since President Eisenhower's interstate highway system. Not only creating good paying jobs, but improving the safety and security of people on our roads. We made the largest investment in clean energy in history of the United States of America, 90 
$8 billion. And it put us on a path toward a thriving, clean energy economy, powering new economy, economic growth and reducing energy costs. Here we are now with an economy in crisis, but with an incredible opportunity, <clears throat> not just to build back to where we were before, but better, stronger, more resilient, and more prepared for the challenges that lie ahead. And there's no more consequential challenge that we must meet in the next decade than the on-rushing climate crisis. Left unchecked, it is literally an existential threat to the health of our planet and to our very survival. That's enough for dispute, Mr. President. When Donald Trump thinks about climate change, the only word he can muster is hoax. When I think about climate change, the word I think of is jobs. Good paying, union jobs that have put Americans to work, Americans to work making the air cleaner for our kids to breathe, restoring our crumbling roads and bridges and ports, making it faster, cheaper, and cleaner to transport American-made goods all across the country and around the world. Jobs. Jobs to build and install a network of 500,000 charging stations along our existing and new highways that we've built across this country, which not only will help America, and the American automobile industry lead the world in manufacturing with electric vehicles, it will also save Americans billions of dollars over time in the cost of gasoline for their vehicles. Jobs that lay the lines for the second great railroad revolution, which will not only slash pollution, will slash commute times and open up investment in areas connected to metropolitan centers for the first time. When Donald Trump thinks about renewable energy, he sees windmills somehow causing cancer. When I think about these windmills, I see American manufacturing, American workers racing to dominate the global market. I see the steel that will be needed for those windmill platforms, towers and ladders that can be made in small manufacturers like the McGregor Industries. I was up in Scranton last week. I see the union trained and certified men and women who will manufacture and install it all. I see the ports that will come back to life, the longshoremen, the shipbuilders, the communities they support. When Donald Trump talks about improving efficiency by retrofitting lighting systems with LED bulbs, remember what he said? He said he doesn't like LED because, quote, the light's no good. I always look orange, end of quote. The light's no good. I always look orange. When I think about energy retrofitting for lighting, I see the incredible projects like the one right here in the Chase Center. <clears throat> I see small businesses like Preferred Electric that design and install award-winning energy conservation measures, <clears throat> reduce consumption of electricity, and save businesses hundreds of thousands of dollars in energy costs per year. I see master electricians and union workers who went through union apprenticeships, who start off good wages and quality benefits that only grow from there. These investments are a win, win, win for this country, creating jobs, cutting energy costs, protecting our climate. That's why today I'm releasing my plan to mobilize millions of jobs by building sustainable infrastructure and, and, and an equitable, clean energy future. In my first four years, we're going to give four million buildings all across this country the same energy makeover that you get here at Chase, the Chase Center. It's going to create at least one million jobs in construction, engineering, and manufacturing in order to get it done. It's going to make places, the places where we work, we live, we learn, healthier, improving indoor air quality and water quality. It's going to save tens of billions of dollars in energy cost over time. That's all real. We're not just going to focus on commercial spaces, though. We're going to give 
direct support to help families do the same thing for their homes. We're going to offer cash rebates and low-cost financing to upgrade energy and efficient appliances and windows, improvements that will cut their monthly energy bills and over time save them thousands of dollars a year. <clears throat> We're going to make a major investment to build 1.5 million new energy-efficient homes and public housing units will benefit from communities, all the communities, three times over by alleviating affordable housing crisis, by increasing energy efficiency, and by reducing the racial wealth gap linked to home ownership. Last week, I talked about using the purchasing power of the federal government to reinvigorate domestic manufacturing. That's what we're going to do with the American automobile industry as well. The United States owns and maintains an enormous fleet of vehicles. And we're going to convert these government fleets to electric vehicles made and sourced right here in the United States of America, with the government providing the demand and the grants to retool factories that are struggling to compete. The U.S. auto industry and its deep bench of suppliers will step up, expanding capacity so that the United States, not China, leads the world in clean vehicle production. We're going to make it easier for American consumers to switch to electric vehicles as well, not only by building 500,000 charging stations, but by offering rebates and incentives to swap older fuel-efficient vehicles for new, clean, made-in-America vehicles, saving hundreds of billions of barrels, millions of barrels of oil on an annual basis. Together, this will mean one million new good-paying jobs in the automobile industry, its supply chain, and the associated infrastructure needed to get it done. We also know that transforming the American electrical sector to produce power without producing carbon pollution and electrifying an increased share of our economy will be the greatest spurring of job creation and economic competitiveness in the 21st century. That's why we're going to achieve a carbon pollution-free electric sector by the year 2035. We need to get to work on it right away. We'll need the scientists at the national labs, the land-grant univer land universities, the HBCUs, to improve and innovate technologies needed to generate, store, and transmit this clean energy. We need the engineers to design them, the workers to manufacture them. We need iron workers and welders to install them. We'll become the world's largest exporter of these technologies, creating even more jobs. We know how to do this. Our administration rescued the auto industry and helped it retool made solar energy the same cost as traditional energy, weatherized more than a million homes, and we'll do it again, but this time bigger and faster and smarter. And as we do this work, we need to be mindful of the historical wrongs and the damage that American industries have done in the 20th century, inflicting environmental harm on the poor and vulnerable communities, so often black and brown and Native American communities. Polluted air, polluted water, toxins raining down from communities that bore the environmental and health burdens, but shared none of the profits. Growing up, breathing that in every day, it's poison. And it's partly why there are such incredible rates of childhood asthma in black and brown communities. Why black Americans are almost three times more likely to die of asthma-related causes in white Americans. It's Cancer Alley in St. James Parish in Louisiana. And it's the cancer-causing clusters along Route 9 right here in Delaware. And that's why today I'm also releasing the state of the environment justice policies that build on my existing plan. This is an area of incredible opportunity for economic growth for our country, but we have to make sure that the first people who benefit from this are the people who were most basically hurt by it historically in the last century by the structural disparities that exist. 
I'm setting a goal to make sure that these frontline and fence line communities, whether in rural places or center cities, receive 40 percent of the benefit from the investments we're making in housing, in pollution reduction, in workforce development, in transportation, across the board. We're also going to create jobs for people by cleaning up the environmental hazards that have now been abandoned. You saw the first the front page of The Times two days ago. All these places that are going bankrupt, except for the benefit that's going millions and millions of dollars going to the CEOs. More than a quarter million jobs right away to do things like plugging millions of abandoned oil and gas wells that exist all across the country posing daily threats to the health and safety of our communities. We're going to hold accountable those CEOs and corporations that benefit from decades of subsidies, then just walked away from their responsibilities to these communities, leaving the wells to leak, pollutants to continue to spew, greenhouse gases flowing in the air and the water. We're not only going to repeal those subsidies, we're going to go after those golden parachutes the CEOs gave themselves before declaring bankruptcy to make sure that workers receive the benefits and retirement they were promised. Let's create new markets for our family farmers and our ranchers, a new modern day civilian climate corps to heal our public lands, to make us less vulnerable to wildfires and floods. Look, these aren't pie-in-the-sky dreams. These are actionable policies that we can get to work on right away. We can live up to our responsibilities, meet the challenges of a world at risk of a climate catastrophe, build more climate-resilient communities, put millions of skilled workers on the job, and make life markedly better and safer for the American people all at once and benefit the world in the process. The alternative? Continue to ignore the facts, deny reality, focus only on technology of the last century instead of inventing the technology that will define this century. It's just plain un-American not to. This is all that Donald Trump and the Republicans offer. Backward-looking policies that will harm the environment, make communities less healthy, hold back economic promise, while other countries race ahead. It's a mindset that doesn't have any faith in the capacity of the American people to compete, to innovate, and to win. It's never been a good bet to bet against the American people. And when you do, it will exact a deadly cost. I know better. I know you do as well. I know what the American people are capable of. I know what American workers can accomplish when given the room to run. I know the climate change is a challenge that's going to define our American future. I know meeting the challenge will be a once in a lifetime opportunity to jolt new life into our economy, strengthen our global leadership, protect our planet for future generations. And if I have the honor of being elected president, we're not just going to tinker around the edges. We're going to make historic investments that will seize the opportunity and meet this moment in history. We're going to get to work delivering results right away on day one. We're going to reverse Trump's rollbacks of 100 public health and environmental rules and then forge a path to greater ambition. We're going to get back into the Paris Agreement, back into the business of leading the world. We're going to lock in progress that no future president can roll back or undercut to take us backward again. Science requires a timetable for measuring progress on climate that isn't three decades or even two. Science tells us we have nine years before the damage is irreversible. So my timetable results is in my first four years as president. The jobs we'll create, the investments we'll make, and the irreversible steps 
will take to mitigate and adapt to the climate change and put our nation on the road to net zero emissions no later than 2050. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get to work now. Now. Thank you. Yeah, I see. Vote for Joe, huh? <laughs> hmm? Yeah. Huh. Quite a refreshing scenario, don't you think? Yeah, you think you can live? Yeah, you think you can get through it? You think there's a little bit of soul in that guy? Yeah. There's equally the same amount of soul in the lady who's going to be vice president. Yeah. Who has a great chance one day of being president. Yeah, she's a highly, highly, highly gifted person. Yeah, and a soul level. She's extreme empathy, extreme power, extreme courage. Yeah, she'll take the hardest road and take on the hardest people. Yeah, and stand right there in front of them and tell them exactly what they've done wrong. Yeah, and help the law maintain a justice in a system that doesn't do that at all. She's been doing that for a long time. And so did Biden's son. Joe Biden's son was once attorney general, and she was attorney general. And during the time when the housing crunch took place and everybody was losing their houses and everything, it was those two attorney generals who worked together, one in the East Coast, one in the West Coast, and both of them would be on the phone all day long talking to each other as to how they can defend the people and their loss and what's going on and how can they make a difference in that. And they fought that. And they were the ones, those two are the ones who made that difference. You know, so that's part of what they did. You know, just during the earlier parts. That was back in the 90s. You know, and they did it together. And now he's, his son has died, died of cancer. You know, and now by all good dharma, you know, they're working together at a time that we need it, and you know it's really coming around. Yeah, you know, so there's, you know, th there is God. You know, it, there is another plan. You know, there's an ongoing plan. Yeah, and uh, that process is at hand. Yeah, there's a process of uh, clearing the demonic aspects of this planet. You don't know. And uh, you know, clearly what I'm talking about, you know, but I've been trying to describe it, been trying to help you understand, you know, this man Trump, you know, he has a previous life, you know, Hitler reincarnated in this life. We met him. We watched him. Everybody loved him. Everybody clapped for him. Everybody said he was the king of kings in this life. And he died a horrible death. And I've tried to explain it to everybody. You do not discern or discriminate on a soulful level. Because when soulless people come who take your soul, you do not remember them taking your soul. And you do not see them again as the same person. And they always come in disguise. They always come in the disguise that you will serve them in that cycle of time because culture is always different. You know, so it's a highly unexpected scenario, this Dark Lodge. Yeah. And catching Trump is like catching Mussolini. You know, because that's who we got here. And you can go, oh, wow, great. We get to, you know, take down Mussolini again. Well, truth is, uh, Mussolini was hardly ever taken down. You know, it happened all over a very short period of time, the collapse of that scenario. You know, it wasn't because the masses of the people, you know, were discerning and discriminating. They were so pissed off, they beat him to death. You know, there wasn't a, a, an ounce of discernment and discrimination. So once he died, no one was alleviated in their soul. Yeah, he was never taken to court. We never got him to say the things he was supposed to say and had to say. We never got 
Michael Jackson to say the things he was supposed to say and had to say so we could save the future. Instead, we now have a time of children being overwhelmingly abused in the same industry as Michael Jackson, all covered up because you did not discern discriminate when you had the opportunity. It's not about you didn't have the opportunity and you just missed it. I found him. I put him in court. I put him in front of you three times. And each time he was set free. First time he just pays people. And the cops don't come and do anything. Second time the cops come. And they try and do something. And then the third time they really try and collapse the whole thing. And it, it, it just simply didn't work. And that's the same situation we have with Trump. How is it? How is it possible? He's in office. How is it possible he's still in office? How is it possible we're in the middle of a pandemic and people are dying? Over a, We're getting to 180,000. We're going to 200,000 by January, if not by the end of September. If it keeps going the way it is, it'll be the end of September, we reach 200,000. And it's not going to stop because they're not going to give vaccines to everybody because they believe in this delusionary concept Trump is putting out, that certain people are immune. And they're not. There's nobody that's immune. Nobody should get this thing. Nobody. We need to stamp it out. We need to take a vaccine. We need to keep it from getting in the body, manifesting in your brain, in your cells. And then once it comes back again in two years in a different form, which it always does, you won't be susceptible to it as much as you are today. But if you get it, it's probably because you got another virus previously about two or three years ago and you didn't get real, real sick from it but now your immune system is really, because these viruses are of the same viral strain. Yeah, study it. SARS virus, this is a SARS virus. Yeah, you know, we're not, we're just in a different strain, different animal, but it's still the same viral strain. Yeah, you know, so it's a mutant. And mutants die out, and then new mutants come back. You know, so that's our process. We're going to have that process. So we need to make sure that we deal with this correctly. And when we get this president, it will be dealt with correctly. Better than any other country. Better than any other country. Yeah? Because we're America. We, if we put the scientists to work, they'll do it. If we hire the people, they'll go do it. We have the empathy, the compassion. We could take care of all homelessness. We could build tiny homes. We could do all this stuff. Yeah? It's just a matter of whether or not we facilitate people to go do it because we have soul and we can see things with a vision. And you could see through things that can't be fixed. You have a vision, you see through it, and now you could fix it. So it's really about the soul. Yeah, And this group that we're getting into, you know, is a very soulful group. Yeah, And they're very involved in other soulful groups making of cars, making of solar, putting in electricity in the right way, and every house, making every single car turn into an electric car. You know, all of that is, is very ambitious, but it's absolutely necessary. It only seems ambitious because we've had Trump for the last four years, who says windmills are bad for you, who says I, he never talks of an electric car. He never says thank you for creating all these industries, Elon Musk. He mo mentions other industries, but he doesn't mention the electric car industry, the biggest industry in the world, the most fantastic growing industry in the entire world, just one industry. And it's completely changing hands. You know, we've got Volvo, we got Ford, we got all the companies are all remanufacturing in a totally different way based on new technologies and new advancements, new robotics, requires people to run these things, to build these things, to put them into effect. And every single car manufacturer is following what's going on with Tesla. You know, so they want to make mega factories, not, not a factory, 
They don't want to refit the factory they've already got. It would be too much. It's ridiculous. No, they have to think big, have a vision, realize this is a new world. A new world. Everybody needs a new car. Everybody needs a new car. Yeah? Because once everybody's got that electric car and they pay no more gas and they put the solar on their house and a whole system begins to happen, it's about money. And the, it's about not spending money. Yeah? And we get into another world where it's about the soul, and all of a sudden we're given technologies and opportunities and building up a house, a job that we've got actually has benefits. Yeah? Even Elon Musk will allow a union into his little comrade situation. Yeah? But for it to be right, it must be union. Because it's about the people. It's not Elon Musk that runs Tesla. It's the engineers. It's the people. It's the people who build the factory. Yeah? It's, it's the people who run the factory. It's the people who design the cars. It's the people who build the cars. It's the people who build those robots. People who understand the software and making of software. That's just one little part of the business. But it requires people. Intelligent high-minded, gifted people with a soul that can do what they're meant to do, and that guy's making gazillions of dollars. It definitely should go into making sure these people are getting benefits and money and long-term, you know, retirement plan. You know? A real 20-year re retirement plan, you know? You walk out of there and you're making as much money as you did when you were on the job, when you leave the job. You know? That's a retirement plan. Yeah? Well, I believe in a different kind of retirement plan. I believe in a retirement plan where people actually settle down, get themselves a tiny house, work part-time for Elon Musk, get really good at what you're doing, and if you're really good at what you're doing, you don't have to live 100 hours for somebody to utilize all that really goodness, you can give them a little bit. And if they get used to that, they'll realize they're better off getting a little bit from highly genius people than getting a whole bunch from people who aren't so genius. Because if you're really genius and you're really gifted, then you really got a lot more things you want to do in life than sit in front of a computer or go into Elon Musk's place and think of him as God, you know, and you're just a peon, and this is the big Tesla, you know, process, like a cult, you know. And if you're a real genius, you don't see it that way. You see this as opportunity, and it's a place for you to live your engineering science and for you to have the ability to, to put forth your new inventions that this company will allow you to work on, you know. And that doesn't have to be done right there in the engineering program. It could be done at home. It could be shared. It could be thought form building. Yeah. So in the future, we have a whole new opportunity of people who are going to become geniuses who right now are just learning to relax because we have jobs for geniuses that's never been done before. We've had jobs for people who go into coal mines that did not require a genius. Yeah. Very few people were had the mind to be a doctor or an engineer. Yeah? More a lawyer because that's God in the machine. You know, it doesn't take a gifted person to become a lawyer. It's really easy to figure those things out. But uh, if you gotta be a person who's an engineer, that means you have to be a person who does the craft, learns that they have to be creative in that craft, and whatever they're learning, they have to better. They have to find a way to make it better. That's engineering. You know, so it's creative thought form building. You know, it's a really good way to use a genius's mind it is let them be an inventor you know, and not fit as a cog. You know? So there's a whole future of our ability. And if we, have, if we lower our prosperity level of what we think is prosperity, then we could take care of our own insurance. Yeah? We could take care of our own, you know, uh, um, what we're going to do after we work, you know, our retirement. 
We can take care of that. Yeah? If you settle yourself correctly, if you put your money aside, if you invest correctly, you use your investment and your, your situations, then you're, you're using entrepreneurship rather than just getting a job and doing that sort of thing. So this way you're using your creative ability to manifest your retirement tomorrow. Not in 20 years, but tomorrow, like next year, you know? And you, you're just focusing, well, I'll retire by having a smaller house, by having solar, by having an electric car, by having these things. And once you get to those things and you have such a small payment you're putting out, you find that, hey, um, my little trinkets of things that I'm doing that is part-time is taking care of what I need to do. So that's, that's like retirement. Yeah. And if you invest that process, yeah, if you hold that process into investment, if you understand stock and other things, it's not hard to make money out of money if you invest it. Yeah. If you invest into a business, somebody else is pulling off, but you invest into it. Yeah. You help start up a restaurant locally. You invest into it 20%. Well, you get every single month, you get a small dividend of the income of that restaurant. Yeah. And you're creating something for socially. Yeah. And it only costs you maybe $20,000, $10,000, $5,000 in some investments. But it's everything it takes for that person maybe to have three investors and get their business going or not get it going at all and go to a bank and they're going to ask for everything. Yeah, lock, stock, and barrel, you know. But with an investor, you have the freedom to win or lose. If you lose, they lose. Yeah, and that's, a ta you know, something you, that's investment, you know. But if you gain, they gain, and it keeps you going. It's faith in other people, yeah. And that's, entre that's another level of entrepreneurship that is rather than you owning a business or things like that, but it's helping to support this process so that a building of entrepreneurship goes on and you start getting help in that process of, of your income, your daily, monthly income. You can go on YouTube and teach. You can do all these different things to make an income, lowering that need down so that as you're going along, there's more money stacking up in your account than you're spending, yeah? Just simply because you're an entrepreneur that's made proper investments and you're those investments keep coming in, yeah? And you're not putting money out, yeah? Which is the biggest thing, yeah? So it's a really key thing for the soul to be able to balance out the simplicity of whether or not you're stressed by money and needs and all those things, yeah? Because if, if you haven't got it grounded out as to uh, being healthy and vital and staying vital, then you're going to need insurance. You're going to need more than insurance, yeah? And it's, it's all a vibrational process that you can, your soul can heal you, yeah? Your soul can keep you from having the need to go to a doctor and have all these different things go on, your teeth fall out, your eyes go blind, all those different things. Your soul literally protects you from almost all of that, yeah? yeah so it's really about the stress level if you can get your lifestyle down to a certain level, you're in a state of retirement that allows you to retire without the process of you having to worry about, am I going to get sick? Is there anybody that's going to take care of me? Do I have a house? Where am I going to live? All those things. If you focus your attention in that way, you lower all of those things, and you're the one who benefits. Yeah? And that benefit, it, it, it starts taking certain blessings, it starts coming in through the monad. And that monadic energy, which you know nothing about, soulful is great, but monadic energy is what literally penetrates into the hearts and soul of masses of people in the world. And it just takes time for you to settle down and follow a new direction. Yeah? And you do not know the outcome. Yeah? You don't know, you might live to be 180 and, and you're living in the same house and it's not costing you anything, you're just living forever. You know, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. And, and people won't know that you're 180 because you still look like you're 60. 
you know, and you're still walking around, still driving, you're not blind, you're not crazy, you know, it's just no one thinks about it, you're just that guy that never dies, you know, <laughs> my grandma talked about you, you know, <laughs> she was a kid, you know, <laughs> you know, that's the truth of the soul, that's the truth of the soul, is when your lifestyle gets to a point to where you are so appreciative of your day-to-day -day existence, you retire. And you retire into that. And you, you accept that this is your life. And this could be forever. And you may live uh, more than 180 years. You know, I know people who live hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. I'm from Tibet. You know, so it's not an uncommon scenario. You know, but they're not people who, who 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 run a business and have a, a great big agonizing stress level, you know. It's not the Dalai Lama or anybody like that, you know. It's meditators and people who live the simplest life and enjoy themselves and, you know, appreciate life, appreciate everything of life in that moment, you know. And and nothing, it's about harmlessness, nothing brings harm to the body, mind, and spirit of that person and they live for as long as they're supposed to. And a lot of times people in Tibet, they die at a certain age in order to reincarnate, to be there for the furthering of other people because they've died and they didn't live long enough. So for you to support them, you have to reincarnate in their cycle so that you can come back and befriend them and not be some crazy old person sitting in a cave that they don't have any identification to. Yeah? But you're a fellow person who's now 30 but w wiser than wise. You know, and that's reincarnation of masters. And they, they don't stay in a single body for long periods of time simply because of their disciples. If their disciples die, they have to go with them. That's how it works. It's not a choice, you know. They just begin to die. And they know they're dying, and they, they usually communicate that. The Karmapa did, other people do. You know, it's the way it works. You know, so soulful, that's monadic. Now, on a monadic level, you're aware. You're aware of your life, your death. You don't need to die. You're not supposed to die. But due to events that are coming up, you may go through some really harsh processes of cancer or other things in order to get your body to lay down and die. Because you have to die that day. Because you have to reincarnate at another time, which furthers the group. On a soul level, it's about the group. Yeah. All right, so I hope that helped a little bit. Let's pray. Yeah, <laughs> do some meditation. So I'm going to do the um, the prayer to Jesus Christ to help you with your uh, humanity's relationship to this Trump process and trying to get us into our safety zone, a little happy place. Yeah. So everybody, just repeat after me. Okay, just close your eyes and repeat this prayer to Jesus Christ. Say after me, Lord Jesus the Christ, Lord Jesus the Christ. thank you for bringing me here. Lord Jesus the Christ, I open my heart today. I invite you to come inside. Come, O oh Lord, and save my life. Receive me today as a child of God. Forgive all my sins. And write, my name and write my name in the book of life. The book of life. I, give I give myself to you, my spirit, my, spirit. my, soul. my soul, my body. 
Receive me, O Lord Jesus Christ. Now, devil, the blood of Jesus is against you. I command you now to leave me. I do not belong to you. I am God's property. Leave my life. I disassociate myself. From you, I renounce you and every evil covenant. I have entered in with you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I have received salvation. I am a child of God. Amen. Okay, just keep your eyes closed and we'll meditate.
the understanding of God.
as one living body of God. I call upon India to bring forth its fourth ray of personality and to integrate its first ray of soul to manifest the hidden light.
Okay, so it was good to see Joe, huh? <laughs> yeah, you like listening to someone like that? Yeah, you're going to be happy to be in America now? Yeah, you're going to be proud of your president? Yeah? Uh, y you're learning what this is about? Yeah? This governing thing is very hard. We need saints in the government. You must discern discriminate. We don't need old, fat people that keep doing the same old thing and lie and, and become the Senate and the House of Representatives and Congress and sooner or later become the president. And we know nothing of what they're doing and why they're doing it and how corrupt they are and all the things that go on. That all has to stop, and it'll only stop when the saints come marching in. And guess what? They're here. The industries he's talking about means that there has to be millions upon millions of people who are alive and incarnated and willing and ready to work. Yeah, it's not the world Trump talks about. Yeah, it's not anything like that. It's not capital stock. It's not this or that. It's about humanity and being humane and wanting to do humane things and worrying about a planet that should be worried about because of corruption, because of oil, because of the amount of things that have gone wrong. And, and everything we see that in previous presidents, yeah, and we see it really bad in this president, yeah. And I basically really, really, I've been pushing ecology since the time of Nixon, you know. So I, that's when I was in college, that's when I was an ecologist, you know. And, and, and I was very, very much involved in the process of getting Nixon out and making a better government, you know. And that took a very long time. That's all the way back from, I think, 1973 or 74, you know, when I, you know, because I had been in the military for four years before that. So I was definitely inside the governing body and my, my guy in charge of me was the president of the United States. And it was terrible, you know. But I was pretty blessed. I happened to have, uh, you know, Jimmy Carter. He became president at the time that I needed it, you know. And I full-fledged the energy of the presidency and, you know, helping to bring saints more and more and more into that office, more and more and more into our world, you know, like Ralph Nader, you know, and many other people. I was very involved in all that bringing saints, even though there were maybe 300 saints, you know, and ready to go. You know, that was 300 saints, and they all became well-known. They wrote books, and they did things that changed the world, like Ralph Nader, you know. And look what happened to our president when he left office, Jimmy Carter. He built homes for the poor. Yeah, he built homes for the poor. He started a ho he himself went out and built houses every week. Yeah? What president has ever done that? What president has so much empathy, so much compassion, carries himself around the world to verify elections are legal and people have human rights, and gathers together the most powerful people in the world 
in order to not be jeopardized by evil elections and evil doers. Yeah. That was that guy. He did that. He gathered that group. Yeah. And he's still strong. He's still alive. Yeah. The man's still running around doing his shit. So is his wife. Yeah. And because of that we have a better world. Yeah. And they're gonna and they're gonna leave this place and they're gonna come back and they're gonna be bigger saints than they were this time. Because they caused no harm. Yeah. All the way through it, no harm. And that's just what saints do. I, it's not like you, you do harm up to you're 50 years old and then you change. You're not a saint if that's your scenario. You know, you're, you're just waking up. Yeah, and in your next life you will be a saint. Yeah. So be aware of saints. You know, give them credit. Stand up for them. Know how hard it is to be in that position, to have so much power and, and influence you know, to make it a better world rather than fill your pockets with money and fly in great big luxurious planes, you know, all the great stuff. So, you know, I showed you a lot of really happy good things, yeah, and, you know, I don't want that to be drowned out by the process of Trump, you know, taking away $200 million from Florida schools, you know, and forcing children to die, you know, and lie about it. Yeah, that's bad enough. Yeah, I had to tell you that one because that's real. Yeah, but then there's this. And this is something to help you out. You know, this is what's really going on at the presidency, around the president. What effect does he have on the world when it comes down to his business dealings as a president? You know, what is really going on? Times, this is important, says it has verified that this person is indeed a senior Trump official and is risking their job. And this person says this effort to thwart Trump is indeed a secret, quote, resistance. But they go on to write it's not about politics, it's about patriotism. And what we're learning tonight, what I think everyone is reacting to, these reports of a growing group of public service aga servants aghast at the moral and security risk posed by this particular president. Now let me walk you through it. The senior Trump official writing there's a quote, resistance inside the Trump administration that they're part of and it's formed by officials vowing to do what they like can Wars, to preserve huh? our democratic institutions while thwarting Trump's Think most misguided impulses until funny. he's out of True. office. The writer is Darth plenty Vader. blunt about the president they serve, saying he's <laughs> impetuous, adversarial, You're petty, and Skywalker ineffective. And the problem the in this telling goes well beyond mm -hmm. style. The writer concludes, quote, the root of the problem is the president's amorality. You think? A little morality problem there, yeah? Yeah? Well, that's the thing. You have to show morals in order to outdo this guy. You have to stay calm, you have to discern, you have to discriminate, you have to not get emotional. You can't get wound up by him because those are all the demons he's sending out to create that, that wound up reaction in your solar plex. You know, lift it up, discern, discriminate, study, you know, realize this man is a liar. Why be bothered by lies? Yeah? Yeah, it has nothing to do, and, and the lies you may think in your other side, being the demons in there now, you know, you may think, oh, the lies will make all the difference. The lies will turn everybody. People will believe the lies. Well, that's a demon, you know, talking inside, going, telling you what it is the purpose is behind the lies. It makes sense? Yeah. It's not you. None of this is you. You know, it's your personality. It's a personification that's coming from the darkest of lords. And it just radiates into you. And if you hear lies, you must learn to discern and discriminate. You must have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And since I'm alive and well and talking to you at least three nights a week and every night, you know, on meditations and everything, you should be able to learn and discern and discriminate and awaken a level of monad that overthrows the governing body that's existing and it brings in levels of monad in people who should be in those positions due to the amount of soul they have in their body. How much soul do they have in their mind? How much soul as a vision?
do they have in being caretakers for humanity? Because yeah, that's our job. Humanity, the higher level, our job is to be caretakers for humanity, and we have to forgive them, save them, and raise them up through new technologies, new advancements, new ways, yeah, and not let the old ways that harms them and keeps them down like that. We can't judge them for it. We have to forgive them and raise them up without any characteristic flaw, like, oh, you're black and you deserve, or you're brown or you deserve, or all of that's got to go away. Yep. Yeah. So that's it for today. Thank you all.